So our capstone focused on three different aspects of ecotourism that can promote ocean conservation. Um, they include eco-resort practices, certifications, and marketing. So we're first going to talk about eco-resort practices. Um, Kaylee Toth. Uh, Abby Alcaramaria. And Jimmy. <laughs> um, so we're first going to talk about what is ecotourism. Ecotourism can be defined as responsible travel to natural areas that um, conserve the environment, sustain the well-being of um, the local people, and also involves interpretation and education. So basically, ecotourism um, combines conservation, local communities, and uh, sustainable travel. So the importance of tourism today, um, it accounts for around 10% of the world's gross domestic product, which is $7.6 trillion um, dollars in US dollars annually. And it's also one of the main sources of employment worldwide, which is about 227 million jobs. Um, and basically, in order for tourism to work, ecotourism to work, you have to follow the triple bottom line, which we all know and love at this point. Um, so <laughs> ecotourism can provide incentives and resources for conservation. Um, while being profitable and enabling communities to move towards uh, sustainable methods of income creation. And in fact, that given that uh, tourist preferences today are moving towards sustainable uh, considerations, um, and the fact that ecotourism is growing so rapidly, it's uh, believed that resorts that decide to engage in marine protection um, actually can be at a business advantage. Um, so the issues with tourism today specifically, um, Resorts empty their sewage and directly into surrounding ecosystems. Um, poorly planned coastal development can lead to nutrient and sediment runoff, um, and also, for example, coral reef removal um, for construction material or sold commercially. And so, also recreational impacts such as careless boating and diving can affect coral reefs uh, ecosystems um, by people touching the reefs, stirring up sediment, and also dropping anchors. Um, so successful ecotourism considers following the triple bottom line, which I said. Um, the resort's goal is to obviously bring in a profit, but also by engaging the local community to make sure that they are respecting the issues at, um, that stand within the local ecosystem. Um, so whether that's by providing um, income to these local communities and or employing them, it's basically in order to Sustain, uh, sustain the physical integrity and biological diversity that the environment is providing in those systems. Um, and then, so we created a dossier for, specifically for the use of tourists um, when they're trying to engage in ecotourism. Um, this is an example of the Wakatobi Luxury Eco Dive Resort in Indonesia. So basically we thought these were the key things that uh, tourists would want to know before traveling anywhere. So the rating, which we found from TripAdvisor, um, on a star basis, and then size. Uh, so for example, Wakatobi is a very um, private resort, not really fa family friendly, um, so it's more relaxing if you wanted to go on a romantic vacation. Um, so then obviously price is really important, um, and then type of coastal environment, marine ecosystem, and also whether it's on a marine protected area, which would provide the tourists with the fact that there might be some restrictions um, on the type of activities that they could be involved in. Um, so whether it's, so diving sometimes is prohibited in some areas just because of the type of coral reef that they're located on. Um, and so these are just other examples of tourist activities that might be um, incorporated at different resorts. Um, so now we just wanted to acknowledge some of the really interesting and innovative things that resorts around the world are doing for conservation purposes. Um, so the Wakatobi Resort in Indonesia provides a really good example of how to engage the local community. Um, they have a collaborative reef conservation program that designates 12 miles of coral reef as a no fishing sanctuary. Um, and in order to, uh, for the local community to respect the no fishing zone, um, the resort provides an annual payment to them as well as um, electricity and clean water in exchange of basically not fishing in the specific areas. And Wakatobi talks about this, um, the spillover effect where um, not fishing in a specific area increases fish zone um, fish population elsewhere. Um, so it, the, in fact, the, um, so the area is very well preserved with no fishing. And then the Andaman in Malaysia, um, it's not currently located in a marine protected area, but they do have the fir uh, Asia's first coral reef nursery, where um, they basically allow tourists and uh, local communities to be involved in coral reef planting in this, their specific reef on their shoreline. 
And also they have a marine life laboratory, which basically, um, you know, it's for education purposes, for children specifically to be aware of uh, local marine ecosystems. One of the really cool conservation efforts done by the Hamanasi Adventure and Dive Resort in Belize is their lionfish spearfishing adventure, and during this excursion, guests are taught how to catch lionfish, how to deepen them, and how to bag them. Then the lionfish are prepared into delicious meals by the chefs on site, or they are turned into jewelry that the guests can then buy. Another really cool resort doing awesome things for ocean conservation is the Playa Nicuesa Rainforest Lodge in Costa Rica. And this resort is also not located near a marine protected area, but local people in the area have created this MPA for um, OSA group, which basically just aims to campaign for a multiple use marine protected area. Um, Costa Rica is home to 2.5% of the entire world's biodiversity, and this group proves that the people in the area know about this and they are concerned and want to protect that. So from our findings, we have identified five main areas for improving ecotourism. In a social context, eco-resorts should educate and engage visitors and maintain low-impact visitor behavior. Culturally, um, they should find ways to include the community, um, for example, by employing the local people of the area. These local people have been in the area far longer than the resorts have been, and so resort management can learn a lot from the people. Um, economically, the luxury prices of most eco-resorts must be maintained in order to balance out the cost of providing guests with an eco-friendly travel option. The price for activities such as diving should be increased, however. Diving is often very cheap and accessible, um, so increasing the rates could reduce the number of divers in the area and further reduce the impact of um, these uh, potentially invasive activities. Um, Additionally, employing former fishermen um, as people who will be working on the resorts will provide them an alternative source of income and will help reduce the effects of overfishing in this area. Um, marine protected areas and their regulation is not something that is usually in the control of the resorts, but since, they, since most of the resorts are located near a marine protected area, it is important for them to know about the maintenance of these marine protected areas and the policies and how they enforce these policies. Um, environmentally, um, in order to maintain an eco-friendly status, resorts should install energy efficient technology, conserve water, control waste, and reduce its use of plastic. So, why have eco-resorts? Um, Eco-resorts are not the only way to promote ocean conservation, but however, they can serve as a powerful strategy for doing so in which the benefits are plentiful to the ecosystem itself, the economy, the local community, and visitors seeking a remarkable getaway. So eco-certification schemes encourage businesses to adhere to sustainable standards. We've examined nine certification case studies and distilled the best and worst practices of each to inform the creation of our own um, ocean ecotourism certification alternative. So LEED is a triple bottom line business that certifies green buildings. Its success lies in it that it is um, recognized globally and its standards have also been improving over time. For example, in 2016, it introduced a holistic project of these cities. However, it's criticized for having its unsophisticated data on actual building uh, performance and conservation benefits. MSC is a nonprofit that certifies sustainably caught wild fisheries. Its main success is in that it has strong relationships with um, retailers such as Whole Foods and Walmart. However, um, it is losing credibility in academic and NGO circles because it certifies high-impact fisheries that use bottom trawling. And finally, RSPO is a young nonprofit founded in 2004 to address the issue of unsustainable palm oil production and deforestation. So it's very successful in engaging a diversity of stakeholders, from bank investors and producers to retailers and NGOs. However, there are no current conservation benefits, and deforestation rates continue to increase in Indonesia and Malaysia, which are the biggest palm oil producer nations. 
Rainforest Alliance is an NGO that trains producers in various industries to work more sustainably. Um, their successes are that they have created marketing, creative marketing campaigns that raise consumer awareness, and they have a rigorous impact assessment. Um, but they are criticized for loosening their certification standards over time. Fair trade is an international system that ensures that those on the producer end of the supply chain are fairly compensated. Producers own 50% of fair trade and have a large say in its workings, but they only certify cooperatives that are deemed market ready, which is problematic because some of the producers, the ones that might need the most help, are likely those that are not yet ready um, to be on the market. Um, bird Friendly is a certification scheme created by the Smithsonian Migratory Bird Center, and they're praised for having high standards and strict requirements, um, but this can also be seen as a failure because their standards might be too strict, making them exclusive and thus unknown. Um, also, the name Bird Friendly does not do justice to the breadth of certification impacts. Um, the name makes the Bird Friendly sound like it's only strictly for the bird. So the Walrus is actually a pretty great certification that certifies eco-resorts. They have a tiered system that allows for businesses to increase their level to the highest level of sustainability, but they only certify a small amount of hotels, um, similar to what Madeline mentioned, creates, uh, makes it vulnerable to, being, to overlooking businesses that have sustainability goals, but not many in place yet. The FSC is a well-known certification that offers assurances from ecological, financial, and social standpoints in forest management. However, they grew too quickly and began applying their standards inconsistently. Um, for example, certifying the logging of virgin forest. Lastly, the ASC tackles the issue of fish farming. And a pro of the ASC is that they do a lot of work in developing countries, which is very important, yet they allow um, the use of wild fish feed to feed their farm species and they're also growing too quickly. So similar to FSC, 